What's going on guys? So today we are out here in Detroit, Michigan, taking a look at the all new 2022 GMC Sierra Denali, as well as the AT4X. These are all new trucks for 2022 and GMC invited me out so I could spend some time with them both exclusively to give you all my impressions of both of these trucks, some of the things that they've done and some of the changes that they've made. But I'm liking what I'm seeing. Hang tight, I'll be right back. All right, so we're gonna start by taking a look at this all new 2022 GMC Denali Ultimate. So this is their ultimate truck, their highest end, highest trim level truck with all the bells and whistles, all the gadgets, everything. Okay, so first of all, I wanna start off by saying both of these trucks are pre-production trucks. So I don't have a sticker on the side that's gonna give me the gross vehicle weight rating. I don't have all the information related to the towing capacity or the payload capacity of these specific vehicles. That's gonna be provided to me later. But I do have an opportunity to spend as much time as I want on the outside and the inside of these trucks going over some of the features and the changes that they've done. I can tell you right off the bat, they've done a phenomenal job in terms of refreshing the look of the truck. You know, whenever you compare a Chevy to a GMC and you kind of look at the differences between the grills, between what they do to some of the body lines, in most cases, I think most people would say that the GMC truck tends to have more of a luxurious, elegant look to it, whereas the Chevy tends to have more of an aggressive, in-your-face look to it, especially if you're looking at the new Chevy Heavy Duty Series trucks. But when you look at GMC trucks, they almost universally appeal to people in terms of the overall look. I can honestly tell you that of all the current half-ton models, the 2022 GMC Sierra probably has the most appealing overall look to me. I have always loved the front grille on a Denali, and that's taken me back to even when I was a kid. You know, growing up, whenever you saw a GMC truck, especially when they first started coming out with their Denali lineup, and I was in my teens and I was looking at getting, you know, a first pickup truck, you always looked at that as that premium, almost unattainable truck because it had that really bold grill. And I love that they've continued that even to today. So whenever you see a Denali, you almost instantly know it's a Denali just by that awesome, bold, kind of meshed looking grill. And they've carried it on to this 2022 model really well. You can see your parking sensors. Of course, you're gonna have your 360 degree cameras and a lot of the camera systems now integrate in with the towing technology on the truck. So you really have not just a lot of cameras, but you have functional cameras that can help you if you're gonna be towing as well. I absolutely love the look of these new headlights too. The overall design, the elements that they've mixed in, the LED, everything on these trucks just stand out and it looks really bold. And this is one of those trucks that's eye-catching when you see it going down the road. It's not just gonna be one of those humdrum trucks that you just you know pass off as being a standard vehicle. These Denali Ultimate trucks look absolutely gorgeous. Now coming around to the front, you can see all of the really nice shiny accents that they've put around the grill and the lower portion as well, plus the fog lights down at the bottom. This paint job is absolutely gorgeous. And then we're gonna take a look at these Bridgestone tires. These look like they're 22 inch wheels. Let's see if I can get to the right area so I can actually see. Yep, 275 50 22s. Trimmed off really nice. This has always been something that's kind of been a staple of the GMC, just having the, the plastic trim around the wheel well to accent your wheel well, make it look a little bit bolder. See the Denali badge down the side. You can also see the ultimate designation right here with the 6.2 liter V8. 
same critique that I give all half-ton trucks. I wish that all the mirrors that came on these trucks were towing style mirrors. They don't need to be the big gaudy towing mirror, but it would be nice to have the lower spot mirror below it because I think that that's important. And if you've used towing mirrors, that's typically your go-to mirror. Coming this way, so this is gonna have your automatic retracting and extending side steps. Nice chrome window accents as well. Coming to the back. This has three leaf springs on the back. It's always interesting to see what direction truck manufacturers go in terms of their rear suspension. Some of them going independent, some of them going with traditional leaf sprung. And as, as of right now, GM and Ford both stay with the traditional leaf sprung, whereas Ram and Toyota have gone with a coil rear sprung suspension. Frame is still the Nox coated frame. I do wish they would move to an E-coated frame, but at the same time, this is a good quality product. I mean, a lot of people like it. The only thing is it can get a little bit messy if you're servicing the bottom of your truck. I remember I made a video a long time ago where I talked about this material. Coming around to the back, you have your multi-pro tailgate, all your LED lights, plus this is gonna have kind of that C-looking LED accent that wraps around when they're on. You have your corner bumper steps, which I really like. That is something that I think is almost, you know, just a common sense idea in a truck because it gets you up in the back of the truck very, very easily. So I really like that. And if you're not familiar with the multi-pro tailgate, you've probably been living under a rock. Basically, you have that tailgate and then you have another tailgate right here. And then you can drop this down. This has the kicker speakers in it. I believe they're standard because of the ultimate package and the ultimate package essentially checks all the boxes so you get every conceivable feature except a few that you may not be aware of or that are always aftermarket such as you know this has the carbon composite bed but you may want to still throw a spray and bed liner on top of it so that's always going to be aftermarket or a bed cover or a toolbox those are always going to be aftermarket but yeah you have your multi-pro tailgate here gets you into the bed of this truck very easily. And then you have this handle which flips up to help you get in and out. And then once inside of the bed, what I can tell you is that feels very, very solid. So I had an opportunity to spend some time in the new Toyota. And to be honest with you, it felt a little bit light. It felt a little bit plasticky. This in my opinion feels very, very solid. And I like how it conforms to the inner fender well right here as well. So you actually gain some additional space that you might not get in some other trucks. They put their LED lighting in a good spot so it shines really well into the bed. And then you still have these spots right here. These are essentially where you would put boards to divide the bed up a little bit. And it also looks like they put some right here. So that's really cool. So you can essentially put a board across here and have it interlock on the other side so you can have kind of a seating area or a flat platform above these wheel wells. So that is really cool and I have never noticed that. I don't know if that's new on all GMC trucks, but that is absolutely a cool feature. And then on the side here, you have a 110 outlet and this is rated at 400 watts. Really good for charging battery packs, things like that if you carry around tools with you. Let's hop down. And then you have USB and an auxiliary port right here for your speakers. So that's really cool. And then you can... That's a little bit awkward trying to put the thing up together like that, but it's still functional. If I had both hands and I wasn't holding a camera, it'd probably be a lot easier, but just something worth noting. Very, very cool truck. Let's take a look underneath it. All right, so of course it has a fully boxed frame. Then you have your axle back here, spare tire in the back, your exhaust hanger. One thing worth noting in case I forget whenever I get over to the AT4 Plus is you see this really, really nice looking exhaust system that comes through the bumpers. They don't do that on the AT4 because of your departure angle, right? You don't wanna run into a scenario where you may drag these over dirt whenever you're you know, going up a hill or up something uh, in an off-road environment. And you know, you could potentially damage it. So that's why they tuck them up and in so you don't have the chance of hitting your exhaust pipes. 
two inch receiver. Coming back around, let's hop inside this truck and take a closer look at the interior. I love the interior of this truck, like the retracting and extending side steps. All right, now that we are inside, I can honestly tell you they did a phenomenal job. And a point that I made out in another video is, you know, in today's era where you're hopping in and out of different trucks and you're seeing what they're all doing and how they're all trying to appeal to you, you kind of wonder if any one of them is going to rise to the top and stand out. And I can honestly say that what they've done here is pretty remarkable. It is such a departure from the current generation Denali or any GMC truck that it really, really makes you feel as if they got the message that it was time for them to innovate and come up with something different. I mean, even the engine start stop button is different. It's no longer round, right? They integrated it in this entire area right here. It looks absolutely gorgeous. And then you look at the 12 inch little uh, dash cluster right here. That's absolutely beautiful. And apparently there's this design that I haven't had an opportunity to see yet. Whenever you get up to the truck and you get in where it kind of swoops across this screen and then onto this screen right here. So you got your 13 inch screen here, you got your 12 inch screen right here. And then you have all the buttons and knobs where you would expect them to be because what you don't want to have to do is go through your climate buttons, go through all of this just to get to different settings that you're trying to get to. Whenever you're using your truck and driving it, you just want to be able to press a button. You want to turn on your error circulation. You want to be able to adjust your temperature. You want to be able to do these things without having to fuss with this large, beautiful display. This is great for cameras. This is great for getting to more detailed information that you want to know, navigation, all of that. It's great for your radio. But whenever you want to just get certain things done, it's great to have buttons, knobs to be able to control those, especially like dropping your tailgate, downhill assist, your parking sensors. This is a big one. If you tow trailers or if you have your tailgate down for any period of time, being able to turn off your parking sensors is huge because if I'm hitching up to a trailer or if I'm towing a trailer and I have my parking sensors turned on, they're constantly beeping at me the whole time. So having a button to quickly turn them off and on is really good. I mean, it's just set up really nice. And then you have your power and volume knob for your radio right here. So you can simply turn everything off or on from this little area. They have done a fantastic job in here with the interior. All the wood accents, real wood on the doors, even the stitching, check that out. It's like this cross X stitching on the door. The seats, they also put it right here in this area. I love the placement of this trailer brake controller. To me, this is where it should be on just about any truck. It gives you quick access to it. If you're driving and all of a sudden you get into a sway scenario where your trailer's kind of being blown around by the wind and you need to get it back in line, well, if you know what to do, you know that you need to typically accelerate or maintain the same speed and then start working your trailer brake control so you can get everything kind of back in line. And when it's up here, you're trying to steer and you're trying to control all at the same time. And having it right here is just common sense because it's right where my arm is. I don't even need to take my arm off of the center console. I'm controlling my trailer brakes from this area. That is really cool and that is such a great feature. I hope this interior carries over to the heavy duty trucks. I really do because this is a phenomenal interior. I can imagine you're still gonna have a console shifter on your heavy duty trucks, but who knows? I mean, the fact is that there's really no need for a console shifter anymore whenever you can just have this style shifter right here. You know, even if they went to a knob, which I kind of don't want them to on heavy duty trucks, but even if they did, it's still functional and it does what it needs to do. But having a center console shifter versus a console shifter, you know, that's gonna be an interesting one to see whenever they release their heavy duty trucks. And then coming over here to this side, you have all your four wheel drive controls, four high, four low. You can put it in auto as well, plus your trailering controls. And this just goes through your different drive modes. You have your memory seat controls over here, all of your windows. Right here, you can fold your mirrors in. And then you can control your mirrors right here. All of this feels very normal, right? None of this feels like it's any big departure, but it's still very easy to get to. Up here, this is part of your super cruise feature. That's that automated cruise control where you can take your hands off the steering wheel. The truck will maintain its speed, maintain its lane, and even change lanes if you're not towing, which is really cool. I had an opportunity to use it, but just like a lot of the trailering features you're seeing on these trucks where you can essentially put the truck into a reverse mode and it will back your trailer up, 
I don't know how often I would use this. I mean, I don't understand a scenario personally where I take my hands off the steering wheel and just not want to keep them on there or around there. But, you know, let me know if you use this, if you have a Cadillac or, you know, if you've had a vehicle that has had this capability like a Tesla, let me know. Do you use it a lot and under what scenarios do you use it? Because I've never had a vehicle with this type of technology, so maybe I just don't understand the application for it. But I love the instrument cluster up here. I mean, do you guys remember going back when you got your first pickup truck and you know, and, and it had little bulbs that you occasionally had to replace when they'd start burning out behind the dash, you know, instrument cluster right here. And you know, you had little lights behind everything and they had to be replaced. It's just, look how far we've come where everything is touch screen now. Is this what we expected when we were thinking about what the next generation of vehicles would be when we got older? Were we thinking of flying vehicles? What were we thinking of at the time? And I kind of wonder, does this meet the criteria of what I was expecting we would have 20, 30 years ago? You know, anyways, let's hop into the back seat and take a closer look at the back of this truck. Okay, so before I hop into the back seat, again, take a look at the stitching right here. This is absolutely beautiful. They've done a great job. I love the real wood right here, all the nice soft touch leather material and suede headliner. What do you guys feel about that? How do you feel about having a suede headliner? Is that something that catches your eye? Are you indifferent to it? How do you feel about it in general? Then these back seats are beautiful seats. I love this area all up here, all the trimming, all the embroidery. And then of course you have these little storage pockets back here, which for me, I mean, I stuff stuff everywhere in my truck, whether they're wipes, whether it's sanitizer, whether it's hand cleaner, whether it's gloves, you know, I put things all throughout my truck and any extra area of storage that I can have, I would use. Then hopping inside, you know, good amount of leg space. I'm going to say from the front of my legs to the back of the seat, and this is with the seat in a very, very reclined seating position. I still have about three inches. I can't imagine that I would be uncomfortable sitting back here, even on a long trip. They've done a good job. Then you have your air conditioning vents, which I love. One USB, one USB-C. I almost feel as if they should have a few more back here. I think people are bringing more and more connected equipment. And if you have two people sitting in the back here and they both have their own thing, you might have an iPad, you might have some phones, you might have other things that need to be charged or you want to maintain a charge on. And having more of these back here, I think is always a good idea. Plus a 110 outlet would be really nice. That's about the only thing I think is missing back here. A standard 110 outlet or even a standard cigarette style 12 volt jack as much connection options as you have back here, I think would always be appreciated, at least in my opinion. Okay, looking up front, you have your sunroof. Still no panoramic sunroof offering, which I don't blame them. I would give up my panoramic sunroof if I could. If I was gonna get a sunroof and I wanted one and I could really pick which one I wanted, I'd likely go to this style because it seems as if there's less areas where it could fail. But in my opinion, I'm just not a big fan of sunroofs on pickup trucks, to be honest. I know on a dealership lot, when you're walking around, they always look really great. And they're always that thing that you're like, oh, this truck has a sunroof. But I never use mine. And if I do use mine, it's only because it's there occasionally. And I want my daughter to be able to look out of it when we're going through a car wash or something like that. But let me know your opinion on sunroofs. Do you love them? Do you hate them? Do you not care? Do you forget that they're there until, you know, that one time that you feel like you need to use it over the life of owning a truck? Let me know. And then panning around here, I do like the center console, nice and flat. I don't feel like my arm's sitting over a hump like on the uh, previous to the previous version or the current version before that had this little hump in the center, but the current version, they eliminated that. It's now flat and they carried that over into this model, which is really nice. I like the tall headrests back here as well. Has the power back window. I do like what Toyota does though, by having the whole window that drops down. I wish all the manufacturers would do that. You definitely can be tall sitting back here because this bumps up pretty high. So that's about a two and a half inch lip right here. So you got plenty of, of headroom above your head whenever you're sitting back here. Very, very cool truck. And I know everyone's gonna wanna know the numbers. They're gonna wanna know pricing, all of that. I don't have any of that information yet. Um, hopefully it'll be revealed very soon. Probably by the time you see this video, some of that information might be revealed. But overall, I like this truck absolutely gorgeous. 
Okay, so that is the Denali Ultimate. That's the outside, the inside, everything I know about the truck right now. What do you guys think? I think it's an absolutely gorgeous truck. And you know me, I'm trying to be as unbiased as possible when it comes to trucks. I want you guys to know how I feel about them when I look at them. You know, the honest truth is when you spend as much time as I do in various trucks and you use them for various reasons, you kind of become a bit desensitized to trucks unless something really stands out. And I think the folks over at GMC did a great job of really making this truck stand out. They did a phenomenal job. And in my opinion, I don't think there's much out there that can compete directly against it. I love the interior of the current generation Ram, especially in a high trim package, but I can honestly tell you sitting in this truck, I feel like they've they've one-upped them with the GMC Denali. And I think a lot of people kind of expect that to happen because again, the Denali brand has always been synonymous with luxury and that higher upper scale truck. That truck when, again, you were a kid, you believed was almost unattainable because it was such a nice vehicle and you always saw all the business owners and all the contractors driving around in them because you knew that they had made it well i think they've given you the next version of that truck that will make you feel like you've made it anyways next video we're going to showcase this at4x which is super cool um, this is a really really great off-road package that gives you a lot of the luxury features you see in this truck but you're going to get it in a far more off-road inspired vehicle so I hope you've enjoyed this video. Hang tight for the next video. We'll talk more about the AT4X. Guys, if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.